Hey VC, what's going on? Matt here, back with a new Vinyl Finds video. It's been a little while, as is usually the case around here. I'm really terrible at, at making these consistently, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, now this is actually the third time I've shot this video over three separate days. A few days ago I shot it, and as I was finishing the video, I got a knock on the door from the mailman, and I got a record in the mail that I wanted to show. So I shot another one yesterday, and when I went to upload it, my microphone had gone crazy. The audio, you couldn't hear anything I was saying. It was just static. And I've tested it, and I hope it's working right now. Um, yeah. And I don't know what is going on with my hair. My gosh. Ugh. I needed a haircut like three weeks ago. Who's got the time, though, right? And who's got the money when you got records to buy? You know, you can't waste that crap on haircuts. <laughs> you gotta get the grails. Uh, and I've got a few grails in this stack here. Everything I'm going to show are online purchases from January until now. Just kind of things I've acquired over the year. I haven't made it to uh, many record stores this year. Just uh, don't get too many more. I did go to Vintage Vinyl yesterday though. Found some choice stuff. Went to Vintage in February and had some choice finds there as well. So my next video will be those Vintage Vinyl finds. Otherwise it's been online and record shows for me this year. So been buying a lot less in terms of quant of quantity, but buying a lot more quality, if you will. And uh, I've rambled on long enough, let's dive into the video. Uh, so first, online purchase, if you watch Derek Fisher's channel, Psycho Derek, he showed this recently. I kind of tipped him off to it. I was reading the Asset Archives and uh, came across this record. Found it on eBay. The, the album is by a gentleman named Dave Bryan. The album is called Synthesis. There he is on the back there. Pretty cool looking cover. This is from 1978, I believe. Yes. Private press release. Acid Archives had a pretty positive review of it. There was only one or two tracks on YouTube. Um, found it on eBay by Dave Bryan. He's selling them, I think, or maybe a relative or somebody. And uh, it was cheap. It was like 18 bucks shipped. And on Discogs, they're going for like 40 and 50 So eBay's the way to go on this one. Really pretty good stuff. Uh, I'm not a big private press aficionado yet. I, I'm just kind of dipping my toes into those waters. But for a start, this is a pretty good one. Kind of a rural cosmic country vibe to a lot of tracks. And then there are two tracks. The closing track on side one, Meditations of Starlight Bliss, and the opening song on side two, Dawn Descent on Arisha, are both pretty psyched, psyched out tracks. I can't talk. Psyched out tracks. Uh, a little bit heavy on synth. That kind of gives this weird like moody vibe to it, but some really good guitar leads as well. Really enjoyable stuff. I like this one quite a bit. Derek, uh, if you watched his video... Had a bad gash through his, like where he had cut through the packaging and cut through the record and then was kind of a jerk about it online. And I've heard some horror stories since then about other people's packaging from him being kind of wonky. I got lucky and, and it arrived safe and sound and, and nicely packaged. So uh, buyer beware a little bit on that one, but it is a, a way to get this album fairly cheap in comparison to the Discogs. Next up. This is uh, one I'd been after for a while just based on the cover and the fact that it was on Vanguard. This is Jeff Mon's Reality. I paid, I have notes over here, I paid 25 bucks for it shipped. Um, pretty good overall. It is a pretty like straight ahead psych, a little bit pop psych album. But the vocals, uh, the first time I listened to this I did not care for it because of his vocals. It's almost a crooner style, kind of a, a almost like a loungy pop vibe to his vocals and it didn't really connect with me the first time but I've since listened to this a couple of times and it's grown on me I don't I don't mind the vocals as much anymore so uh, kind of a grower not a shower as I uh, say so often about some of these psych records so uh, you know it's not a psych essential or anything like that but if you do dig the 60s scene and are looking for a little bit deeper dive this is a pretty good one to get affordably I think generally it goes for like 35 to 40 online, but you can find it around the $20 mark fairly easily if you look long enough on eBay and stuff. So pretty good one there. And then uh, going back to Derek Fisher, he tipped me off to an eBay buy on this one, and I had been after this for a while. This is Summerhill, self-titled on Tetragrammaton Records. It's a DJ promo copy, which is kind of cool. It is uh, just in stereo. It's not like a mono pressing or anything. Really like this album quite a bit. I got this for something $25 shipped as well on this one stylistically this one is all over the map you've got some rural country rock kind of vibes to it you've got some straight ahead psych rock tracks which are really really good you've got some pop psych you've got some pop ballads it kind of hits on a bunch of different notes you would think it wouldn't work 
I think it does. I think it flows pretty well as an album and song to song. There's a lot of good stuff on hand here. Summer Days is a great track. Um, what's the other one? Might be Soft Voice, the opening track. Uh, and It's Gonna Rain. I think those are the two other tracks that get a little bit deeper. Don't quote me on that, but this is in full on YouTube. It's well worth your time and well worth checking out and unbelievable. My battery is dying on my camera, so time out while I change batteries. All right, <laughs> battery's been changed. Hopefully this one's got a full charge, it looks like it does. Uh, and I did not know that my dog was in the room with me. I don't know if you can even see him on the couch. Right there, just this little black blob. It scared the crap out of me. I would turn around to get a battery and saw him on the couch and thought it was like a raccoon had snuck in the room. Lord almighty, <laughs> I'm awake now though. All right, back to the finds. Let's get to it, just showed Summerhill. Now I'm on to, yes, the next group of finds. Got an email out of the blue from a guy. It was like a group email. I must have purchased something from him on eBay in the past or Discogs or something. I have no idea, honestly. Um, and it was an email saying, I'm, I'm done selling online. I've got a bunch of records left. Don't want to mess with up, you know, posting them to eBay or Discogs, taking all the pictures. Here's a list of them. If you want them, let me know. Five bucks a piece and then we'll work out shipping. And I was like, well, what's this going to be? If he doesn't want to mess with listening to them online at five bucks, they're not going to be worth it. I was way wrong. I bought a ton of stuff from him. Uh, a good amount of it went to the record store. I had a lot of upgrade copies for me personally and a few things that uh, were new to me and new to my collection, including one big time want checked off the list. Um, I'll just kind of quickly show the kind of upgrades that I got here. Um, and then the shipping... I don't even know if he ended up charging me shipping at all. So these really were five bucks each, which was pretty cool. Nice, clean upgrade copy of SRC for me. I believe these guys were from Detroit. Really nice, crunchy, hard rock, psych album. Good stuff there. My cover had like water damage on the bottom. I got it cheap and I got this one even cheaper and it's just mint. And that's the other thing. All of these came, I had no idea what condition was gonna be. To, just took a chance and they are all like VG plus or near mint. There's nothing lower than VG plus on these. Uh, new to me, I had these out of order, sorry. Still in the Crows, self-titled. One I'd seen a lot for like 12 to 15 bucks and just never wanted to pop on for whatever reason. Uh, and for $5, I was willing to, to give the album a chance. Fantastic, great British blues rock. Uh, I think they're British anyway. Um, anyway, uh, Maggie Bell on vocals, wonderful uh, blues vocalist. And uh, yeah, just enjoyable stuff. I'm, I'm sorry I slept on this one for so long, but glad to have it in the collection. And then a trio of Neil Young upgrades. The self-titled After the Gold Rush, and everybody knows this is nowhere. These are all just so clean. I won't take the time to show those or talk about them, but just for $5 a piece to get near mint copies of them is wonderful. Same with this guy, Kinda Kinks. My copy was beat to crap. I found it in like a dollar bin years ago. This one is just ah, beautiful. Um, and this is a mono copy as well. Another really good upgrade. Mine was a really beat up copy. This one's mint. Fabulous Knickerbockers, Lies, Fantastic Garage Rock. Really good stuff. Uh, believe it or not, I did not have a copy of this album. And I do now. This is The Doors, Morrison Hotel. Five bucks. Uh, I, now I'm done with my Doors collection. That was the last one I needed and just never wanted to pay the full price for it. You know, I wanted to find it cheap. And I did finally. And then another little pop psych nugget to add to the collection. This is Three's a Crowd Christopher Movie Matinee. The band name might be Christopher's Movie. I don't know. Um, five bucks is kind of what you should pay for it if you find it in the wild. I, sometimes you just see it go for like ten bucks online. Stay on the cheaper side. This is okay. Didn't love this one, but it, it was a fun one-time spin. And I probably, you know, I'll keep it because I'm crazy. But this is one that should be purged probably. Um, and then a cool one here, not again, not another expensive one, but a really clean copy of John Lee Hooker's Endless Boogie. You know, like a 15-ish dollar album for $5. You betcha, John Lee Hooker. So, look how clean it is. You know, crisp corners. Look at those crisp corners. You know, collectors go crazy for that stuff. But here was the big one. When I saw it on the list, I was like, well, it's got to be a reissue. And I got it in the mail, and it's not. This is an original mono copy of Gene Clark with the Gosden Brothers. Look how beautiful this is. This is just dead mint on the 2i Columbia label there. Beautiful, beautiful mono copy. 
Gene Clark of The Birds went on to a solo career, very much country rock. And this album, this, um, I don't want to say that this is my favorite Gene Clark album, but it's, it's up there. It's produced by Larry Marks and Gary Usher. They each produced different tracks. You can absolutely tell without looking at the credits on the back who produced which tracks. Larry Marks, they're all like the straight ahead country, country rock stuff. Gary Usher gives them all a little bit of a cosmic, kind of light psych vibe to them all. A little bit dreamy in spots, a little bit uh, of like some trippy effects going on. The Gary Usher tracks are bar none my favorite produced tracks on here. Um, if the whole album was that, this would be just, this would be top 10 albums of all time for me probably but as it stands it's still a phenomenal album and really good um, and it normally goes for like 75 bucks online so to get this for five dollars is just ridiculous ridiculous the next two were ebay finds i believe both from vintage vinyl in st louis their ebay account uh this first one was 14 dollars shipped they're both in a similar vein. This is Killing Floor, their self-titled album on London Records. The cover has seen better days. It's not like a mint cover. It's VG minus, you know, if you want to be technical or whatever. Uh, but the record is VG plus plus. I don't know if you can see the, the shine there. Great blues rock, British blues rock. A little bit crunchy uh, in a more of like a hard rock vein, kind of like Black Cat Bones, but a little bit heavier even. Um, this normally goes for like 50 to 60 bucks, and so $14 was a, kind of a steal of a deal there. Not normally my cup of tea, not something I would normally shell out a lot of money for, but for 14 bucks, I'm hopping on that all day long. And then for $19.50 shipped, this is Hard Stuff with Bulletproof. This is a UK copy on Purple Records. I'll show the label because this is not one that you see very often around here. I'll, I'll take it out so you can see the gloss on this one too. This one is just, this one is really nice overall. Uh, another one that goes for like 60 to 70 bucks normally. And uh, to get for, you know, a little bit less than a Miss Jackson. Yes, please. Again, this is, this is closer to like hard rock than it is blues rock. Um, kind of a, people call it heavy psych. I don't get a lot of the psych elements here. I get more of just a straight ahead hard rock album, but really enjoyable. Like that one a lot and that's a steal. This next one was uh, a Jealousy Generator of Sam's in his top 10 vinyl finds last year. I believe he had it in his top 5. It may have even cracked his top 3. Um, and I was very happy to get this one checked off of my list for $18.50 shipped. The Head Shop, self-titled album, one and only album from The Head Shop. Probably a cash-in group, studio group would be my guess. You do have pictures of the uh, band members on the back and they... You know, Joe, Jesse, Drew, Jeff, and Danny. No last names, so who knows if this is actually the band. I don't know. This album is wonderful. If you're looking for a tripped out album start to finish, all killer, no filler, like no poppy filler tracks, no, uh, oh, what do they call that? Kind of like those good timey ragtime kind of track. No, this is deep trippy stuff front to back, and I love it. This is so good. It's on Epic Records. Uh, typically like 40 to 50 bucks, generally speaking, in that range. Sometimes it dips around $30, so to get this for uh, just under 20 bucks is another steal of a deal, and I'm glad uh, to no longer be jealous of Sam's copy. This is one I didn't think I would own because it's a little bit heavier on the pop side of things in relation to its price. This normally goes for like 80 to 100 bucks. I did not want to pay anywhere near that for a, a pop psych album that was, you know, more on the pop side than the psych things. But I got a pretty good deal on this. For $39 shipped, this is Merrill Finkhauser and his trusty HMS Bounty with the album Things on Shamley Records. Shamley most, mostly known for like um, country and bluegrass kind of stuff, but they did have the Moonrakers and, and a couple other kind of rarities on their on their label show it there on that blue shamley label this is in great shape all around the only thing wrong with the cover little tear right there which kind of sucks but no seam splits nice and crisp all around vinyl is beautiful plays great sounds great uh and again it's pop psych heavy on the pop light on the psych 
with the exception of the track A Visit with Ashaya, which is a nice Eastern influence track that gets kind of deep and trippy and is the, definitely the standout track on offer here. But uh, Meryl Fankhauser was involved in a lot of projects. Moo later on um, in the early 70s kind of got in a little bit heavier vein there. Um, but had some really great pop albums. Uh, good songwriter. Very enjoyable stuff. This is worth checking out and listening to if you're, a, you're kind of a psych aficionado. So good stuff there. Uh, another one checked off the Sam Jealousy Generator list, even though I had to pay about three times what he paid for it, which, it hurts. It hurts. But I do have it, and I'm glad to have it. This is the surprise package free up. Ever since he found the copy of Vintage Vinyl for like 16 or 17 bucks, I have been on the hunt hardcore for a copy. I did not want to pay the 75 bucks that it's going for now. I was, uh, more comfortable around like 30 to 40 I had to pay up a little bit, paid 45 for it, shipped. Very happy with it. It's a super clean copy. Uh, it is on the uni pack, which sucks. On Lee Hazelwood's uh, record label, LHI. This is fantastic. This is, uh, I would call it more progadelic. The vocalist gets a little bit proggy. There's some uh, heavy keyboard and organ work going on, but it all stays uh, firmly planted in that psychedelic realm with a lot of trippy effects and production elements and things like that. The closing track, Free Up, Everybody gets a turn soloing, including a, a lengthy drum solo. Not always the biggest fan of those, but in a 15-minute track, they got to fill it somehow. Why not with a two-minute drum solo? But everything on offer here is fantastic. 100% uh, Vision is probably my favorite track on the album. It's a seven-minute long track. Uh, the opening track, New Way Home, is great, too. Kicks off with, the, with a banger and <laughs> kind of maintains that vibe throughout. So phenomenal stuff. Get this one while it's, you know, it's, it's on the rise. Get it now before it hits a peak. Um... I think you can still find this around 50 bucks pretty easily, and this is this is well worth your time. Uh, these next three, boy. Three albums I never thought I would own. Well, this first one I'm going to show, though, here, I did think I would own it at some point. But I thought I would own it for, uh, like, 30 bucks, And then the price kept going up and up. This was, like, t eight, ten years ago. The price just kept going up and up and up. And now it's, like, 100-ish, give or take a little bit, right? 80 to 120, kind of that range. And I got lucky and did find a copy of this for $39 shipped. Being very specific with my prices, it's how I logged it in Discogs. I, I, whenever I log an album in Discogs, I put exactly what I paid for it so that someday, if I ever need to sell them, I'll know what I need to get back out of them. I don't know. Who's going to sell them? Never. But uh, this is, anyway, the Millennium Begin. Phenomenal stuff. This is uh, Kurt Bocher produced, if that's how you pronounce it, Butcher, Bocher. Just, uh... He did the Sagittarius Present Tense album. Um, phenomenal producer for Columbia. This was rumored to have been the most expensive album that Columbia produced at, up until that point and didn't make hardly any of it back. The album sold poorly. They didn't tour with it because the album didn't sell well and the, the label kind of didn't want to back it, which is kind of crazy. They sink all this money into it, and they, but they don't want to spend money to send them on tour either. Uh, it is on that Columbia 2i there. The cover has got a little stain on the back, but again, no seam splits, no issues like that. The vinyl is beautiful. It sounds so good. This is this is top of the heap pop psych. This is up there with Eternity's Children for me as my favorite pop psych album. To Claudia on Thursday, um, Karmic Dream Sequence number one. It's all phenomenal. Lots of fuzz guitar dotted throughout. Maintains kind of a dreamy, floaty vibe to a lot of things. I, this is. This is the pop psych that I love, and uh, I would absolutely call this an essential psych album if you're a, a collector of 60s records. This is... Uh, mm, I'm so excited to have this one. Uh, I'll show this one first because I do like the other one a little bit better. Okay, I'm kind of showing them in order of how much I, I like them and how excited I am to have them. This is the record I got the other day when I had shot this, and like there was a knock at the door, and I was like, I have to shoot a video again and put this in there. Coming from my buddy Dylan over at Noble Records. What up, bud? How's North Carolina going? How's those pop-ups doing? You get any sleep? <laughs> uh, he posted this on Facebook and Instagram, and I saw it and saw the price that he had on it. Messaged him immediately like, hey, buddy, that's that's mine. Power of Zeus, the gospel according to Zeus on Rare Earth. Uh, he had this for about half of what I normally see it going for online. And then after I showed it on Instagram, uh, my buddy Jeremy over at Dead Wax Records in St. Louis sent me a comment and just said, hey, we've got a copy in our store. It was 10 bucks cheaper than, than what I paid for it from Dylan. 
but I'm very happy to support Dylan. I don't think I'd ever bought a record from you before, man. I know I'd bought a shirt and some other stuff in the past, but this is, I think, the first record I've bought from you. So I'm very happy to support you and uh, and all your pop-ups and your record ventures, especially now that you've gone full-time with it. So uh, congrats, man. I'm, I'm happy to support you and still feel like I got a way fair deal. Uh, this was 75 bucks. It's up there with some of the most I've ever paid for a record. Almost. Almost hits that mark. But, uh... Well worth it, man. This this album is so good. It's on Rare Earth, so there is a little bit of a funky vibe to it. Uh, but it's mainly in the percussion, some kind of breaks and, and kind of beats, you know, the, the lingo among the record collectors. But it, um, it has kind of a hard rock edge to it with the guitar playing, but there's still some psychedelic elements. This is just, it's so good. I didn't think I would ever own a copy. Didn't think I'd ever see a copy in person, let alone hold one and have it in my record room here. Uh, and it's great. And, and Dylan told me, he was like, the record looks VG, man, you know, VG, VG minus, it looks like that, but it plays VG, VG plus-ish. And so I was like, I trust you, man, I, I don't mind. There was a pressing defect on one of the tracks on side one, I believe, it was like a little bubble, but I took a little toothpick and just kind of wore the groove down a little bit, no more skip on that track, and there's hardly any noise other than in between the tracks, it plays so good. Mmm. Just, Yeah. The hits keep on coming this year. My top 10 this year is going to be A, tough to narrow down, and B, stacked. I'm very excited with how this year has gone with record finds. Last but not least, the end introspection on London Records. Again, another one I never thought I would own. Didn't think I would ever find one in my price range. Luckily for me, I'm buying a lot less, so uh, I'm able to spend a little bit more because I've saved up a little bit more month to month. Uh, I got this on eBay. It was 80 bucks shipped. Put in the starting bid was like 75 bucks with five dollars shipping. Put in the minimum bid. Nobody else bid on it, and I got it. And it is just a beautiful copy. I'm a little bit mad at myself. You see there the introspection. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Uh, it's a little bit wiped off because of me. I'm an idiot. When I got it, it had a little bit of dust on it, so I sprayed a little bit of Lysol on a rag. Didn't let it soak in long enough, and just wiped and it took some of that ink off right away. But otherwise, this thing is in beautiful shape. I will show this very sexy blue London label. Mm, look at that. Fantastic. A again, like Eternity's Children, The Millennium Begin, The End Introspection, just fantastic UK pop psych. Heavier on the psych though. Lots of psychedelic elements going on in this one. Um, Under the Rainbow, Shades of Orange, Cardboard Watch, Introspection Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, side 2, uh, what's the one? Loving, Sacred, Loving, She Said Yeah. <sighs> All killer, no filler. This is phenomenal. This is another one that's essential. You've got to listen to it if you haven't. You've got to track down a copy. It has been reissued. Uh, the reissues are affordable. However you need to get this one, do it. You won't be disappointed, I promise. So that's it. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. I know I went a little bit long. I had a lot of records to show. I think I showed like 25 records there or something, but uh, it's been a while. I hope not to be gone as long this next time. I do have a plan to do another video next week, hopefully showing some vintage vinyl finds, and then Sam and I should be reunited after the summer, or kind of our summer break, and should have some record run videos coming uh, down the pipeline. I won't say soon because I always that bites me in the butt, but it's going to be back been enjoying watching you guys' videos. I still watch. I don't comment as much anymore because my old iPhone, this phone here, the YouTube app on it, disabled comments like four or five months ago. So, pardon me. If you haven't heard from me in a while, that's why, but I should have a new phone coming sometime in the next week or two and uh, start seeing some comments from me again. But anyway, thank you guys. If you leave a comment, I'll do my best to reply on my computer if I, if I get a moment. Uh, maybe a little while before I get to it, uh, just with work and, and craziness of life and stuff. But uh, I do want to talk with you and interact with you, so thank you guys. Uh, also, oh, thank, thank you to O-Vinyl. Shout out to O-Vinyl. Uh, stopped by my record store a few weeks ago on his way from Texas to Ohio or, or vice versa. I can't remember. I'm sorry, man. But it was super nice to meet you. It was awesome running into somebody at the store. And, and he just was digging, and then he checked out and kind of mentioned it casually and in passing so it was kind of caught me off guard but i was really excited to meet somebody from the youtube vinyl community in the flesh again and uh anybody that's come up to me at the st louis record shows the last couple shows it's been nice meeting you guys as well you know who you are uh come hit me up at the next one here in a few weeks in september and uh and we'll chit chat and stuff and maybe 
Maybe go do a record crawl or, or record dig or something in St. Louis. It'd be fun. Anyway, I'll end it now. Thanks, guys. See you later.